Hello, everyone. So today is something very special. I've decided to hijack our monthly energy reading inside the Lovely Radical Academy and give an open invitation um, to others who aren't working with me in that space to learn the best life hack ever to simplify so many parts of self-development. So I'm just like totally distracted by my lion's mane today, but I'm very salty today. Salty CEO has arrived in the space. So as people come in, I'm just going to give you a chance to land in the space, take some yummy deep breaths and actually come into your body. You might have been rushing around all day, all night, whatever you've been doing. Allow yourself to completely be here in your body as if you're looking through your own eyes. And I say this, and this is for anyone who doesn't know about disassociation. Most humans these days are living in a dissociated state. We're in our body, but we're not in our body. Our mind is 10 different places. This is a lot of the time why we get injured or things go wrong because we're not actually present. We're not in our own body because our mind is all these different places. So anytime I ever stub my toe or trip up on something or something runs out in front of the road, I'm like, oh, oh, like start noticing these little reminders to, and sometimes we use a bit of a sound effect, like come back into my body feet on the ground. I can feel my heartbeat. I can see through my own eyes. This is a super powerful decision to start making so that you are actually present and can make better, clearer decisions rather than just living by default. So today I'm going to tell you about a method, a cleaning method, a reframing method, a way to own your reality that might feel a little bit uncomfortable and yet the method itself is so beautifully simple. So quick backstory. There was a therapist who worked in a mental hospital for the criminally insane in Hawaii many years ago. And these were prisoners who were violent, who were dangerous, who were shackled, who some of them weren't even in their own mind. They definitely weren't associated. They were completely disassociated. And this is why a lot of mental health issues have been given these labels, like, oh, they're crazy, they're this, they're that. Really, they're usually just so disassociated because being in their body has been unsafe at a time, maybe in their childhood, maybe all through their life because they kept repeating patterns. And so they're just completely disassociated. Mind has left the body, right? And so... Oh, oh, here's my beautiful notes. This therapist, Dr. Hulen, came to this hospital to help turn some of these patients around because nothing was changing. And what he did was he refused to do any of the traditional psychology methods that they had been trying and failing at. His agreement was that if he was going to come and help, he was going to get to use his own method. And as he worked with these patients, what he would do is whether he was reading their file or having a one-to-one -one interaction with them is he would notice what he felt as he was listening to them or as he was reading about them. The feelings he felt being around them and their energy, around their story and the things they'd done. Anger, rage, fear, resentments, aggression, and anything else. And as he noticed his own emotions towards them, at them, about them, he used this practice to clean up and soothe and clear what he felt around them and from them. And here's the kicker they started changing. They started getting better. All of them. All of them. 
And then for those who were enough in their minds to be able to do the practice themselves, he would task them with doing this practice anytime they felt their own anger, rage, fear, resentment, and aggression, pain, hurt, any of that come up within themselves, they would practice this method as well. And they had huge breakthroughs. But even the ones who couldn't do it had huge changes and improvements simply by him doing the practice on himself. This cleaning method, or as I like to call it, a forgiveness method, is traditionally called Ho'oponopono. And it's about taking complete personal responsibility for your life, which a lot of the time doesn't feel that great, especially when we've been hurt, abused, abandoned, traumatized, all the things. Why should I take responsibility? They did that to me. I get it. I get it on every level. Every story you could tell me of pain and horror in this world, I've probably been down one of those roads, which is how I'm here today before you to show you there's another way. And this is what I've come to know to be true. I have too much proof that it's true. That anyone that shows up in our experience we have created it. We've drawn it in, we've called it in, we've manifested, attracted, allowed it. Because everything in this physical world is energy. It has a vibration. And we are only able to see more of and find evidence of more of whatever energy we are vibrating at. And a lot of this is in our unconscious programs. So if you haven't even delved into the unconscious mind yet. That's why you're only living off about 5% of your own programs. And most of those you're not even aware of because they're still on autopilot, but everything else is in the unconscious programs that have been passed down through generations of pain and wars and famines and plagues and betrayals and so many awful atrocities. A lot of this exists within your energy, your programs, and it filters into the behaviors that you do and how you show up and act in the world, the autopilot programs. That's why when we come across people we don't like and we might say, that can't be something I've created because I'm not that at all, right? We've all done it. And yet here's the, Here's the bad news. Somewhere, you are that. It might not be originally yours. However, you are holding it in your consciousness, in your programs, in your energy, which means, here's the good news, you have the complete control and power to change it finally. Somewhere, whatever the unwanted experience is with the relationship, the colleagues, the business, the money, somewhere, whatever your perception of that person is, whatever yuckiness comes up inside, it's because it's you. It's part of you somewhere. Somewhere you are the same and that's the great news. Because as you let yourself be okay with that possibility, even if it doesn't make sense in the conscious mind, you can use the practice to clean it, to clear it, to resolve it and release it and change it for you and anyone around you and anyone to come, which will start shifting other things in your physical reality. Yes, even other things people. Hmm? You create your own reality. Can you start to own it all the way to the core? And this forgiveness practice and prayer will be the best way to move through anything or anyone unwanted showing up in your reality. So the practice is a mantra or an affirmation, if you will, that is four lines and they're so beautifully simple. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. 
I love you. I'll say it again. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And today, we're going to drop into a gentle hypnosis and meditation and use Ho'oponopono to address any areas that you might have been either avoiding or turning against. I can't be like me. I can't have created that. They're bad and I'm better. We've all been there. Society programs us to do that. But it's when you transform into this new way of looking at things and acting towards things and thinking of things and being about things, that's when real change will happen in your life. Now, instead, we're going to see those things as you and clean them using this practice. You can use this prayer at any point throughout your day. It's an incredible way to reframe when you're stuck in a really sticky moment. When something really bad is happening or unwanted or you're waking up and you're thinking about that breakup or that job you don't want to go to, this is the simplest way to just go straight into something else that's creating so much massive change in your subconscious. To reframe from how you might unconsciously and automatically want to react or respond to that situation. And instead, you'll repeat this a number of times to create a shift before you take any action towards a solution or a better outcome for your day. And so I invite you now to close your eyes if you like. You can lie down, you can sit. If you are driving or operating heavy machinery, please pause this and come back to it later when you can lie down or sit with your eyes closed. Shouldn't need to say it, but hey, here we are. And I'm going to suggest a few areas of life for you to contemplate and see what comes up in your emotions. Remember what the doctor did. He thought of a situation in his life that was not what he wanted or that was bringing up intense emotions for him. You recognize the emotions and then practiced the prayer. And so as I suggest these areas, I'll give you a moment to see what comes through and something will always come through. The first thing you think of, the first thought that comes into your mind, even if it's super random, even if it's that random person at work that looked at you funny the other day and you think, oh, maybe they don't like me. That person's a bitch. Maybe it's trauma from your childhood. Maybe it's that ex-partner that still bugs you. In the different areas, I want you just to trust the first thing that comes into your mind. Notice the feelings that you feel, the specific emotions, whatever they are. Let them be active in your body. And then we're going to say the prayer three times, and then we'll move on to the next area. And this is something that you can rinse and repeat. It's also something that you can just utilize all throughout your day without having to go through certain topics. We'll repeat this process a couple more times um, together, and then you can always come back to it and do it over and over again. Oh. You don't need to make sense of what comes up during this time. You don't need to overthink it, but allow yourself to recognize the feelings that you feel about the people or situations and allow the practice to clean that feeling within you just for you and whatever side effects come through let them come through so first as you close your eyes and really arrive in your body maybe you'll take a nice yummy deep breath really feel yourself land heavy inside your beautiful form seated laying down wherever you find yourself maybe start to recognize your beating heart the slowing movements of your lungs as you inhale and exhale a 
allowing each breath to expand all through the body, reaching all the cells and exhaling, allowing things to start to soften, starting at the top of your head, as if there's some beautiful warm water just slowly dripping over the crown of your head and coming down the sides of the face. Breathing slower as you feel that warmth moving down the throat, the back of the neck, allowing all the cells in this space to relax and soften, melt, and slow. Each breath expanding through the body as you feel that warmth coming down now over the shoulders, down through the back, through the shoulder blades, that beautiful warmth covering, dripping over and moving all the way down through the torso. Feeling it surrounding around the belly, the lower back and all through the hips. And your hips soften and relax. Allowing that warmth now all the way inside the body as well as outside to move down the legs, moving around and through the knees, releasing any tension as it moves down the legs, relax. Reaching the ankles, the base of the feet and the toes. As you feel the whole body Begin to relax here. And I invite you now to think about yourself, about who you've been throughout your life, your year, your week, even today. Thinking about yourself in those unwanted situations. When you speak to yourself in a not so healthy way. When you allow yourself to see her and feel her. And ask, what do I see and feel about her really? If good things come through, that's beautiful. And allow yourself to see anything else. It's safe to see contrast. It's safe to see our so-called negative aspects. Without the darkness, we cannot know the light. And by allowing ourselves to recognize the darkness we may see in ourselves or feel about ourselves. We create an opportunity to unlock even more light than we ever knew was possible. What are those emotions you feel about yourself that aren't wanted? Recognize them, feel them in your body and your mind and repeat after me. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Two more times. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Take a breath. 
Now I'm going to invite you to think about your parents, whether they are with us or not, whether you know them or not. Thinking about the emotions that are unwanted, thinking about the opinions you have of them, the perceptions of them, the negative thoughts, the things you wish were different. What emotions do you feel when you let yourself go into that darkness? Even if it's small or huge, let yourself see it. Let yourself feel it. And then we go, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Take a breath to reset. Now I invite you to think about any siblings that you may have or other family members, whoever comes to mind that makes you feel most active or against whatever conflict might have happened in the past or is currently happening, that person or people. Let yourself see your emotions around it. Let yourself feel your emotions about it and them. And here we go. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Take your breath. Now I invite you to think about past friendships or current friendships that are activating negative emotion. Whoever you thought of, let yourself see it. Let yourself feel it. And so we begin, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you your breath. Then I invite you to think about any colleagues, bosses, clients, past, present, future in the context of the workplace, whatever workplace you have, and anyone you may hold any negative emotion towards. You'll know which one is most potent and intense for you. And here we go. 
I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Now possibly the most powerful one, I invite you to think of past romantic partners or lovers. The first or many that pop into your mind where you have the most intense negative emotion towards. Can you let yourself see that part of you and reject any resistance to the argument that your mind might make? Remember that this might not even be your program. It could have been passed down so many generations in order to show up in your reality and the bad news is that it's there. The good news is that you can change it and you can only change it because this person has reflected it to you. Capture that emotion, recognize it, feel it. And here we go. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Take a nice long deep breath and let it out with a sigh. <sighs> it's a good one to repeat many of. Next, we're going to think of a stranger or someone you barely know who might have upset you lately. Perhaps it was the person who cut you off in traffic. Perhaps it was the person who gave you a funny look. Whoever comes to mind, and any time this happens throughout your day, we say it again. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Take a breath. Let it out. And we're going to finalize today's practice coming back to yourself. I want you to recognize any negative emotion you may still currently feel, perhaps that came up throughout that. It's so easy when we're doing these self-responsibility practices that don't quite make sense, that we can beat ourselves up for how possibly that could be part of me. So I'd like you to recognize any anger or sadness or fear or hurt or guilt or grief or shame or any of that that might be currently within you for yourself, towards yourself because of past things that might have happened. Whatever that is right now, recognize it, feel it. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Sorry. Please forgive me. 
thank you. I love you. And just let that sit for a while. Allow yourself to be in this moment with whatever is happening. You can continue to repeat these words in your mind for the next few minutes. Slowly coming back to this present moment. Allow your breath to deepen, to activate and awaken you. You can move your fingers and toes and allow the body to be revitalized by each breath. Coming back into this moment in time. As you return to your day, knowing that you can use this practice anytime. That when we say I'm sorry, we're saying it to ourselves. When we say, please forgive me, we're saying it to ourselves for feeling those unwanted feelings. When we say thank you, we are saying this to ourself for feeling those unwanted feelings so we know the contrast and what to clean to create the wanted feelings. And of course, I love you. Just in case you don't say it very often. You can use this practice any time of day anytime, anything, anywhere, no matter what it is, is bringing up negative emotions or thought patterns or memories for you. Whether it's worrying about the past, whether it's someone cutting you off in tra tra traffic and you're feeling some anger around that. Maybe it's someone looking at you funny and you're feeling some kind of discomfort. Anything unwanted, instead of spending minutes or hours or weeks or years in the negativity of that program, that story, that feeling, that belief system, you now have a simple reframe to interrupt that pattern and say this instead for as long as you need to, or at least three times, and then ask what action could I take in the direction I want to go? What action could I take in the direction I want to go? What this does with the mind is that it interrupts the hypnosis that you're currently under that is your unconscious programs, that is the belief systems passed down. You're in a hypnosis of them. And when we interrupt that unwanted feeling with love and compassion 
rather than making it wrong or bad or pushing it away, we achieve transformation. Because if we were to push away and ignore and hate on the negative emotions that we ourselves feel about any situation, we're rejecting parts of ourselves and therefore not loving ourselves. And so what if you loved yourself completely? What if you chose to transform any negative emotions you feel about others for you? And perhaps you'll notice that the people around you change. You will, will you not? You can return to this practice whenever you need. Make sure you share it with someone who might also need it for themselves to get out of a stuck, sticky, unwanted emotional situation. And until we meet again, remember you choose it, you create it. And so let's enjoy it more often. And I will see you all either inside LRA for our next beautiful call or the next time we meet here. Love you all. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.